Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Must Connect with ControlM session. My name is Seth Lang, and I'm a technical support analyst for the ControlM team at BMC. Today, we'll be discussing the Automation API CLI client. And joining us today as panelists are Octavio Vasquez and Trinidad Guyton. During this presentation, we recommend going to full screen mode by pressing the full screen button at the bottom of the screen. Please note that this presentation is available via the files pod at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions during the presentation, please post them in the Q&A pod. We'll be addressing those questions at the end of the presentation. Now let's take a look at our agenda. We will start with an overview of the Automation API CLI client, and we'll briefly go over its architecture. In the demo, we'll review a few scenarios that you may encounter with the Automation API CLI client. Then we'll go over a summary of what we discussed. We'll, we will list some resources, including additional knowledge articles, and we'll finish up with a live Q&A session. The Controlum Automation API client is used to interface with the Controlum Automation API REST interface. Controlum Automation API is a set of programmatic interfaces that give developers and DevOps engineers access to the capabilities of Controlum Enterprise Manager within modern application release process. You can use a command line interface to build, run, and test your jobs and exist against an existing Controlum instance. Here in this diagram, we see the architecture of the Controlum Automation API and the various processes that make up its internals. We have the Automation API client. It can be installed on any host. The requests go through the Tomcat web server to the Automation API REST server running on the Controlum Enterprise Manager server. From there, the requests go to the GUI server for authentication. According to the type of test According to the type of request being made from the Automation API client, the requests then go to the configuration server or the GUI server. And starting at version 920, the configuration requests are routed through the configuration API server. For our demonstration, we will install the Controlum Automation API CLI interface. We'll set up the configuration of the environment, and then we'll set up a default environment to work with. Many of the steps we're seeing today can be found at the docs.bmc.com website. Within the section Control M, you'll see the section for Automation API. And under Installation, we'll see that our first step is to install the Node.js on our client machine. We'll first install this on a Windows machine, downloading the Windows installer from the node.js.org website. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll accept the default values. Once the installation is completed, we'll select Finish, and then we can open a command prompt to test our Node.js installation. We'll run the command node-v to see the version of Node.js that we just installed. And then we'll also run the command npm v to see the version of the node package manager that was bundled with the Node.js installation. If you're installing the Controlum Automation API CLI client on a Linux machine, you'll need to also make sure that Node.js is installed on that machine. On the Node.js.org website, you'll see under other downloads, there are sections for various installation types. Along with other options, You'll see options here for binary archives. You also see some suggestions here on the websites for package repositories that contain the installation. You will need to verify with your systems administrators for the appropriate steps for your environment, as the steps that are followed can vary not only by operating system type, but also by the policies and procedure of each organization. Only for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll enable a package manager. I must reiterate the importance of verifying with your organization's policies and procedures as to which package repository or installation media is appropriate to your specific installation. After enabling the package manager and running the installation, just like we did previously in the Windows environment, we can now verify that Node.js is installed by running the command node-v 
which will return the node version that was installed. We'll also run the command npm-v, which will give us the version of the node package manager that was bundled with the node.js installation. It's not necessary to download the Automation API CLI client from an external or public website as it's included and can be downloaded from any currently supported Controlum Enterprise Manager server. We will demonstrate this from the Linux terminal running the wget command and then entering the full name of our EM server with its full address starting with the host name. In this environment, the, the Controlum EM server is installed on the host name Demo Controlum with the HTTPS web server port 8446. We will follow our host name with a colon, the port forward slash automation dash API, and then another forward slash followed by the file name ctm dash cli.tgz. Here we see the error message cannot verify the control M certificate. We're seeing this error message because the certificate installed with control M is a demo certificate that comes with the installation. And this has not been installed with an SSL certificate that's signed by a certificate authority. For more information on this topic and the steps to deploy the certificates, please see our Connect with Control M video titled Securing Control M Enterprise Manager Client Connectivity Zone 1 SSL. In the meantime, as we're aware of the source of this certificate, we will rerun the command with the no check certificate option so that we can continue working with our demo certificate. Now we can run the npm utility with the syntax npm-g install, followed by the name of the file that we just downloaded. The control M automation API command line interface should now be installed. We can check the installation by typing ctm into the prompt, and we can now see the ctm help this verifies that the installation was successful. We can also install the CLI client on a Windows machine by entering the same URL in a web browser. Once the file is downloaded, we'll open a command prompt to the directory where we downloaded the file. The same npm command that was used in the Linux environment is also valid on the Windows command line. After running npm-g install, followed by the file name, the node package manager will install the automation API CLI client. As we did before, we will check the installation by typing ctm in the prompt, with the ctm help verifying now that our installation was successful. Now our automation API client is installed. So now we need to set a control M environment within the automation API command line interface. This step creates an environment name that will be used to specify to which control M enterprise manager the automation API CLI commands will be sent. The CLI command to an add an environment will need an endpoint which is the URL address of the Enterprise Manager Automation API server. We can test our endpoint by typing it into a web browser. If we want to verify the port, we can run the command emweb underscore status from the command line of the EM server machine. Please note that the Automation API requires that the HTTPS connector be listening. As of Control M920, Automation API, Application Integrator, and the Control M Web are configured to only work with a secure SSL connection. Here we can see that the EM Tomcat web server in this environment uses the HTTPS port 8446 with the host name demo control M. 
we will enter this host name and the web server port followed by forward slash automation dash API to add the environment we will use the command ctm environment add. We can use any name for the environment in this command. We'll need to use this name when specifying the environment in later commands, for example, when switching between different environments. This command uses a syntax ctm environment add followed by the name that we're choosing for this environment. In this case, we're, using, we're choosing the name CTM Environment 1. And then the URL of the automation API followed by the username and password of the user who has access to run CLI commands. The user and the password need to be surrounded by double quotes. The user and the password were already configured in this environment during the setup and installation of the Control M Enterprise Manager environment. Right now, since our first environment is set, it's already de the default environment, so our Automation API CLI commands will affect this environment. We will verify that we can log into the environment with the command ctm session login. This command returns the username, a session token, and the AAPI CLI version. The API client's version will automatically update to match the Automation API server version when connecting to an environment. We'll now switch over to our Windows environment and run the same commands, but this time we have run the ctm add environment command a second time with a different environment name and EM host. We then run the command ctm environment set with a second environment name in order to switch over to that environment. As we have switched over to the second environment, we now see the ctm session login command connecting to the new environment. For our first troubleshooting scenario, we're creating a new environment that logs into the Automation API CLI with a different user. When we attempt to log in, we see a not found error followed by the host name. To verify, we enter our endpoint URL from the endpoint into a web browser, and we see the website cannot be reached. By changing the host name, we see that we reach the Automation API web page on the server. This, is helps, this helps verify that we are using the correct name and connection details. So back on the Automation API command line, we run the command ctm environment delete with the environment name that had the incorrect host. By running the ctm command, we see the help section with the list that includes the ctm environment show option. The ctm environment show option displays details of all the environments that have been added to this client. We will add the environment back with the correct host name again so that the ctm environment add command will now allow us to switch over to that environment. The ctm environment set command will help us switch over to that environment We'll run the ctm session login command again, which brings us to our second troubleshooting scenario. We now see a different error message. User has no privilege to use the Control-M Automation API. If we look at the EM REST SRV log file that's found in the Control-M Enterprise Manager server log directory, we see the same error message. For this, we'll reference knowledge article 248 273. Here we can see the privileges that are needed to log in to the automation API in order to get login privileges. We also see here the privileges that are required to perform specific actions in the environment. In the Control and Configuration Manager, we can select the EM component from the component tree on the left side of the screen and then select authorizations. Depending on the version of the Control M Enterprise Manager that you're running and the specific actions that the user will be authorized for, you can select either individual privileges or you can assign roles for the user. 
After adding the privileges, we can now see a successful login session. To summarize what we've seen in today's presentation, we saw an overview of the Automation API architecture and we demonstrated the Automation API CLI installation. After configuring the AAPI environment, we also set a default environment and we demonstrated switching between AAPI environments. The information seen on this screen can be referenced to dive deeper into the details of today's presentation. Thank you for attending this presentation. We hope this information has been useful in helping to further understand the Control and Automation API command line client. We would like to encourage you to provide your feedback in the webinar feedback form. Please let us know what you thought about today's presentation and about any topic that you may want covered in the future or any comments or suggestions that you may have. We'll be sending you a survey in the next following days and we would appreciate a few moments of your time to fill out the responses and send these in. You may follow us on social media platforms via Facebook and Twitter. Past BMC webinars can be viewed on the BMC Software Control channel on YouTube. Today's webinar will be posted in a couple of days. We will now proceed with the Q&A session.